Hello everybody, this is Jeremy Taylor with the Nadal, and welcome back to another video. Now, this video is going to be my review and my um, unboxing video of the PreSonus PX1 uh, large diaphragm condenser microphone. And of course, in this video, we are going to indeed have some uh, footage of that microphone. Now, keep in mind that this is one of the microphones that PreSonus has as their kind of starter edition, I like to think of, uh, microphones for entry-level studio artists. Now, this microphone is $130 and is pretty well built, to be honest. I really like the casing. I really like how it sounds and how it looks when you hold it. I like how it feels. And um, overall, it definitely looks like something that is more valuable than how much it actually costs. But of course, with the microphone, we're more worried about the sound quality. Now, I'm going to say this uh, to be accurate. This microphone is a very dark sounding microphone. It has a lot of low end and it has a really, really obvious taper for the high end roll off. And if you look at the frequency chart, you can even see that it's not full frequency, even though it does technically reach all the way from 20 to 20, it does have a roll off. Most people would think that this might be an issue. Whereas I actually think this is a benefit. A lot of lower uh, priced microphones tend to have this excessive high end tone that makes you think it sounds amazing because it has this bright sparkly top end. That is usually not the case. Most microphones that have that really nice bright sparkly top end are way too harsh and oftentimes do not sound good in a mix. Whereas this microphone is much darker and is essentially going to fit in a mix a little bit more neutrally depending on how you have it set up and what source you have. If you have a voice like mine, which isn't exactly heavy in the low end, this microphone actually does a very good job of giving you a nice robust sound. But if you have a very deep and uh, bassy voice, this will definitely not be the microphone for you. For one thing, the noise floor to me is a little bit loud for a microphone. Not saying that it's actually a loud or obnoxiously noisy microphone, but I have noticed that there are other microphones that are a little bit quieter. Lewitt makes a lot of microphones that are essentially designed to have almost no noise, and it does kind of have a little bit more noise than my neat microphones can be. That said, I really like the way that this microphone sounded for a lot of sources. And the noise never actually got in the way. It has about the same amount of noise as you'll get from an SM7B once you've cranked up a preamp to uh, be loud enough to actually, you know, be usable. So as long as you use the microphone properly, noise should not be an issue. Now, what type of sound sources do I think this is good on? Personally, I like this on bright sound sources, at least as a way of kind of darkening things up and making them smoother. And uh, that's exactly what we're doing for this example. Now, this is a song that you guys have all heard before. This is um, a Bob Dylan cover of Isis that we have recorded years ago. And I had the drums re-recorded are basically re-re-recorded, and we use the PX1 as the talkback microphone for the drummer. The reason why I did this is because I always end up using the talkback microphone as a drum crush channel, a mono crush drum sound that eventually will feed into the reverbs, which will give us a really nice lush sound. So let's listen to the drum set without the uh, PX1 in it, shall we? Sounds like a relatively nice, clean drum set, right? Let's add the microphone into the kit. So we're just going to uh, take it out of mute and take a listen. Let's mute it. And back in. It just has this nice bloom to it, right? I really like it. Now, um, the way that we're processing all these tracks is pretty simple and straightforward. I'm simply going through console one from Softube, and I'm using this as a channel strip. Now, I wanna just give you a general overview of everything that I did, just so you can see what happened. This drum kit was very bright. If I bypass console one on the overheads, You can hear that really harsh tinniness. 
So if we take this out of bypass, bypass, and not a bypass. So just on the overheads alone, I'm doing a lot of tone shaping to kind of smooth them out while also boosting the high end. The same thing kind of happened with the kick drum or the hi-hat. Moving on, we have the kick drum. Bypass. And back in. Let's move on to the snare. Bypass. And so on. The toms don't have anything done to them. And the next thing is the talkback mic. Now, the talkback mic is actually really fun. Let's sew this up and take a listen. Cool. So that sounds really dope, right? Let's keep in mind that this is the PX1. So this is just a talkback mic. Let's bypass console one and let's listen to the original sound that this very dark microphone was catching when recording this extremely bright drum kit. It still has a lot of top end because that top end was just overbearing, but it has low end information in it that is very usable. So how do we use this? Now, when we want to do a drum crush or a, you know, squashed room mic, you tend to want to suck out the punch and bring in the sustain. This is going to help it sound like it's lasting longer while also kind of having a really nice little like vacuum going on to make room for the actual instruments. So if we bypass everything, it has a nice recorded sound. If we turn on the shape function, I've essentially used the transient designer inside of it to suck away the punch, which is the initial transient hit, and increase the sustain. Bypass. And back on. Cool, and then the next step is we turn on some equalization. And then finally, they have a little bit of compression at the end. Bypass. And back on. Now, what I really like about the uh, PX1 is, notice how I said it had a substantial noise floor. But I said if recorded properly, the track should not have a noise issue. This right here is a perfect example of the PX1 from Presonus actually picking up enough detail but not being driven too hard so that when it's time to move things somewhere else it's very easy to get a very nice sound out of it. Um, personally I think that this is a very easy workflow going through something like the uh, soft tube console one or through some UAD channel strips or even some native effects like the fat channel collection from Presonus. In this case I just got a console one so I'm kind of messing around with it but I really dig the sound that I got. So uh, let's actually see what happens if we take everything out of solo and we basically bring in that talkback mic that is, once again, remember, the PreSonus PX1. Now let's bring in this nice crushed talkback mic that we have. Mute. And we can bring this up a tiny bit. Let's mute it. You can really hear how this microphone is very good at accenting low end. It's making everything sound really crunchy and really overdriven, but it's doing it because I want it to. 
Now we also have the drive turned off, but when we turn that on, that's just gonna add more saturation. And there you go. Hopefully that shows you how this microphone is a very useful microphone for more creative aspects of the studio. And although I ended up not keeping this microphone, I do kind of regret it. After using this as a talkback mic and using this as a room mic, I'm noticing that this is a very good source of a color for your tracks. So if you're a beginner and you have a very high pitched voice and you need to add some girth to it, I would definitely recommend checking this out. If you are someone who has a very bassy voice and needs more of a nice high-end timbre to everything, you might want to skip this microphone. But there is the fact that you can get some amazing and very clean sounding recordings with this thing. And the cost is only like $130. That's cheaper than most decent crappy microphones. So as far as my overall review of this thing, I definitely like it. I think it sounds great. And any of the cons are very easily kind of uh, swept away when you really think about how it's going to be used. There is one big con that I think needs to be discussed though, and that is that sometimes you can hear a little bit of resonance on the microphone if you're holding it by your hand and shaking it around. That's something that happens with pretty much any microphone that isn't uh, really well uh, shock absorbed. Like right now I have a um, Sennheiser microphone up here. I just moved the camera because of it. But this is on a Rycote shock mount, and that usually prevents it from getting any noise. Same thing with the SM7B. It's basically designed to have a shock mount internally built into it. It's okay sounding. It works, but it's not amazing. One last time before we end this video, let's just take a listen once again to the PreSonus PX1 as the talkback room crush mic for the drums. This is with a bypass. And you automatically get this kind of sense of things being bigger than they were. Um, everything has this nice big depth to it suddenly. And all you did was use a cheap microphone as a room mic. So if that doesn't sell this as a very affordable option, if you're on a budget, then I really don't know what will. Personally, I like the microphone. I'm thinking about actually ordering one, even though I already returned the one that I borrowed, just because I really like it. Like the uh, PM1s or the PM2s, the small pencil condensers, I really enjoyed working with them in a production environment. This is the same thing. As far as my review, I would say this would be a 3.5 out of five stars. And this is definitely a buy if you're looking for a nice microphone to have a dark sound to kind of darken up signal sources. Or if you need a microphone that's going to give you a nice smooth top end. Either way, they sound great and they're pretty comparable to other microphones, their price range and their size. So this is Jerry Mateo within the DAW. I hope you like this video. We're gonna try to start doing more um, music incorporation with reviews that we do. And uh, if you like it, give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. Leave comments, we love comments. Send us emails, go to our website in the DAW.com and check out PreSonus. I highly recommend their pencil condensers. I believe they're called the uh, PM2s. And the PX1, which is their large diaphragm, is definitely a good entry-level microphone to get. This is Jeremy Toth in the DAW, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.